several abilities. We're going to talk about the word ability today in relationship to um, the ability that Father gives you if you take it, if you ask for it, and if you deserve it. That's the ability we're going to talk about. You know what the word is in the Greek? It's duminous. Duminous. We get our word dynamite from it. We're talking about power. We're talking about power that, you know, father issues to get things done, usually related to miracles, healings, and um, even a ministry. Power means success. And that power, certainly we had an example of, in as much as we're in the season of Pentecost, even at this time. And Pentecost was only an example as the church began when there were 120 there. Is how it's going to end, where there will be thousands. That example and that type was given when that power came from God on the 50th day. That's what the word Pentecost means in the Greek tongue. After Passover, then the Spirit itself came upon God's elect there. And they spoke, as it is written in Acts chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, in a language that every person from the world all over at that time understood clearly. It wasn't unknown. That's a misnomer. It was clearly understood by every person that heard it, not only in their own language, but in the dialect of the county in which they were born. And what's really important is what did they say? What they said, of course, is recorded in Joel chapter 2, and it has to do with this end generation when the spurious Messiah walks this earth. I said walks this earth. Is here de facto. And um, that was the power. And I would have you know that as uh, Mark 13 backs it up, that you're not to premeditate what to say before you're delivered up before the spurious Messiah. God handles the dunamis, the power at that time. But meanwhile, through the church, you are to use that power that Christ has invested in you, which is to say your knowledge and spirit and faith. You can tell how much power you have by how much faith you have. So having said that, with the spirit having spoken through them, I mean, that is the evidence of the presence of the true Holy Spirit, is that you can speak in every language of the world for whoever's present, and they will understand it in the county in which they were born. You know something? Man can't imitate that. You never have to worry about anyone imitating it. That would be the real thing, okay? The evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit, it must be clearly understood in every language. And it always has to do with standing against the spurious Messiah, as written in Joel chapter 2, as Peter would say on that Pentecost day, this is that that was spoken of by Joel the prophet. That'd be Joel chapter 2. Now, how much of that power did he leave over, though, from that Pentecost day as the church was formed and growing, it gives you an example of what you're to be today. It's very timely, and it's very precious. Because when you come unhooked from that power, every word of God, you want to be careful of some man that would tell you, you don't have to understand every word of God. Just, just be spiritual, Ooh, and boom, boom, land. Be careful, you're listening to a false prophet, false teacher. We have that power. And that's why you are successful, is because you use it instead of being off somewhere in, in no-no land, all right? Acts chapter 3, let's discuss that dunamis, that power, just a little bit. Do you have it? What part of it do you have? Where were you when it was passed out? Uh, in this third chapter, let me bring you up to speed. There was an old boy that was f over 40 years old. 
hadn't walked from the cradle, from the womb, actually, is what the word said. I mean, hadn't walked a step. And along comes um, John and Peter, and he, his parents always carried that little one down by the gate called Beautiful. That means where people are in a good mood, and they're going to drop some money in his little coffer. And here he's been there for 40 years. Everybody in town knows he can't walk. He's paralyzed. Now it's going to take some dunamis, some power, to make that 40-year-old get up and walk. And he held his cup out to, to uh, Peter, I believe it was, yeah, in verse 6. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he did. It wasn't long until his ankles healed, his joints, and he was dancing and just singing and having a good old time with them. Now, there's one thing you never want to overlook. What was that? Whose name was that done in? Peter's name? Some man's name? I don't think so. It was done in the name of the, the power. The power that, all, that, is, that feeds man, the ability through his faith, his belief, and his strength. God will only release power when he knows one knows how to handle it or, or can be trusted with it. Okay? And that's it, whomsoever will. I don't want that to sound like there's just a few, maybe even like preachers that have that. That's not true. That's everyone that believeth. Okay, and they're, they're really beginning to cause some questioning here. I mean, like I say, you know, they didn't need any proof. This man's 40 years old. He's been laying there since he was um, there at the gate, collecting money since, since he was a baby, practically. They know this man can't walk. And yet now he's up dancing and rejoicing and he's a whole man. Naturally, this calls for some answers. How did this happen? Verse 12 of chapter 3, I believe it is. Let's pick it up there, okay? And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What, what mean is this? How did this happen? What's going on? And, and needless to say, I'm sure you're very familiar that that would cause quite a stir. Verse 13, others mock, said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong. <laughs> Let's get with the program, Pastor Murray. It's wonderful to be perfect, isn't it? Never make errors. I was in chapter 2. Okay? Never follow a man, follow this word, this power, okay? I would have led you wrong, but not intentionally. Verse 12. And when Peter saw it, you know, that they're, they're really questioning this. He answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? And why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power, our own dunamis, our holiness, we had made this man to walk? In other words, it wasn't our power, but they had the authority to utilize the power from Jesus of Nazareth to touch that man and cause him to walk. You see, why is Peter kind of saying this in this way? Because it's written that the Messiah would come and this power would be released from all the prophets, okay? And these were supposed to be learned men that he was talking with. Verse 13, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus. That's Yeshua, which is to say Yahweh's Savior, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You still insisted that with your little cries of crucify him. Verse 14, but ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. That was Barabbas, Barabbas, uh, Barabbas, rather, which is to say, being interpreted, 
father of the son, which both were there, only one was the son of God and the other, a murderer, was the son of Satan. Verse 15, they chose the son of Satan, Barabbas. Verse 15, and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead. That takes power, friend. Whereof we are witnesses. We've observed it. We experienced it. Now, now think for a moment. Many might say, well, why should we believe them? Because they had the power. They just made this man who could not walk, 40 years old, caused him to walk. Because of his faith, because of their faith, and because of the power of the one they had crucified. And verse 16, and his name through faith in his name. Now listen carefully. Faith in his name hath made this man strong, made him solid, made him well, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. You're here to see this man that was paralyzed for 40 years dance and sing joyfully among you, in the midst of you. My friend, that is the power of your Father exercised in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You know, one from Nazareth was supposed to, there's nothing good came from, from a Nazarene, so it said, by that community. Well, the best there ever was came from Nazareth. It, Verse 17, and now, brethren, I would that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. I know they were ignorant. They didn't know. Were they blinded? Did they not care? Well, Satan has great influence and power also. 18, but those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. How many? All his prophets. Have you read them? It tells you, or are you ignorant also? It tells you that Christ should suffer. He hath so fulfilled. Psalms 22. He was hung to the cross. He was nailed. His arms drawn out of socket. His legs and feet pierced. And the Roman soldiers gambling for his clothing at his feet. Written in Psalms 22 a thousand years before the fact happened. He's saying, don't you know? Why didn't you know? And with this power presence before you, it's a reality. It's not a religion. He's walking. He's well. He's healthy. I don't know. What kind of powers do you have? 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, forgotten, done away with when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Do you know there is a time of refreshing? It's even now if you partake of it. You know, this is not a happy, happy old world, but you can be happy. Don't ever be robbed of having a happy life, even in troublesome times. Why? Because you're not ignorant of what's about to happen. You're not ignorant of the power that God will instill within you if you use it rather than hide it. Verse 20, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. No problem. That's second advent. He is coming. Verse 21, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. I don't know, when did the world begin? You know, a lot of people don't even know that. A lot of Bible thumpers will tell you it was 6,000 years ago and they show their ignorance. It was millions of years ago as it is written in the Bible itself. That was the beginning. What happened? How did God's power come to be? How was Satan overthrown? That took power. And power in the positive sense. Why? To give you life. This one, this Jesus, this Yeshua, Yahweh's Savior, died on the cross that you could have power over all of your enemies, which is to say including Satan. 
If you use it, first you got to believe. If you don't believe, I'm sorry, you might as well run out there in the wind and try to blow into it or something. That's about where you're going. Okay, You've got to believe. It's a reality, not a religion. He is so very real. That's why he picked this lad that had before him for 40 years. So that they could see it with their own eyes. Peter continues on and gives them quite a Bible lesson about what the prophet said that would come to pass. I suppose they had, the, the sad part is they had read it. They were priests, most of them, a lot of them were. They had read. They just chose not to believe. Why? Well, it wasn't really up in the Sanhedrin, all right? It really wasn't an accepted thing. So uh, he continued on. Now, let's skip on to chapter 4. I mean, it begins to get pretty serious that they're spreading this word around. And um, it's the people are, I mean, you know, that's a pretty impressive thing to see this old boy that's 40 years old up hopping around and dancing and, and celebrating. They, um, the high priest and many of the kindred, they get in on the act. They want to know what's going on. Verse 7 of chapter 4. Same subject, here we go with it. And when they had set them in the midst, well, we want to question these boys. They ask, by what power? The dunamis. Okay? What power or by what name have you done this? Well, now, I don't have to tell you all. You know it was by the name of Jesus. And it was the power from God. Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined, you're going to question us here, of the good deed done to the, uh, this uh, particular man, um, be, by what means he is made whole. Tell us how he got whole. This impotent man. He's going to do it. Verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. They thought they'd got rid of him. They thought they crucified him, put him in a tomb. A lot of them said, oh, they come and stole that body away. Well, let me tell you something. If somebody had come to the tomb and stole the body away, or took him down to the cross, he feigned death, he wouldn't have that kind of power. Okay. I mean, power to defeat death is only um, helped by the divine. That's to say our Father. Only our Father. Uh, because what? what? What is it that dies? Only the flesh. And in Christ's case, there was a transfiguration where not even the flesh was left behind. Why? So that people couldn't lie about it. So that people couldn't say, well, he didn't, you can't see his spiritual body. Well, you couldn't, not in this dimension. So God transformed, transfigured them whereby they would. But that's the power we're talking about. Verse 11, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. You rejected it, which has become the head of the corner. He's now in charge. Now, any way you want to slice it, that leaves them in bad shape, does it not? I mean, they rejected him, caused him to be crucified, and now he is head one. That leaves them in a terrible shape. Why do I say that? I don't want you left in that shape. I want you to be on the side of he who controls, or that stone will fall upon you and crush you. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, or that can show this power. Understand, they documented 
by that act what they're saying here. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and they marveled they were unlearned and ignorant compared to the ways of those people's world. All right. Um, and they took and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, the greatest teacher that ever walked the earth. I guarantee you they weren't ignorant. They studied with him three years. He was the living, walking word. And he fed the word into their minds, telling them exactly how things were going down and what they should do. The same as he left word for you in the simplicity of how things are going down and what you are to do. Don't miss the boat, friend. It's pulling out of the harbor. It will happen as it is written. This is why Jesus, when asked, well, what about this, that, or the other? And he would say, haven't you read it? What's wrong with you? It is written. And people marvel today. I wonder what in this world is going to happen. Well, read it. It is written. Verse 14, And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, that could say no, they could say nothing against it. Hey, they couldn't discredit it. I mean, there's proof in the pudding, okay? Verse 15, But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. I mean, boys, we got to do something. What are we going to do here? We can't just string him up right here in front of everybody. They love him. Okay, 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them and is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. We can't go pointing fingers at them, calling them fakes, or we're in trouble. Okay? They got it, you, you know, a leader must always have the will of the people, supposedly. That's in politics, you know. Thank God we don't have to worry about that in religion. We have one leader, and those that don't follow him are out anyway. Okay, all of his word, that is to say. They're out of luck, and they do it to themselves. So we can't deny this. Verse 17, But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Let's promise to throw the book at them if they open their mouth. Let's sue them. Or let's start some dirty paper about them. That'll fix their wagon. Let's threaten them. You know, a public figure doesn't have much control over what the press or what the public might say. But ignore it. Okay, stick to the truth. Show yourself approved. And God will bless you rather than curse you. As long as God blesses you, Hey, don't apologize to anyone. It isn't necessary. Never apologize for God's word. Why? God doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. And you don't owe anyone an apology for truth. Period. Don't even as much as wish them Godspeed if they go a different trail. Or you become a partaker of their evil deeds. It's just like that. It's that final. Stick to that that is obvious. Oh, what is obvious? God's Word. He always gives proof if you care to look. Verse 17. But the, uh, let's see, we got that. They're going to throw the book at him. Verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor touch in the name of Jesus, nor teach in the name of Jesus, okay? But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. What they said is, do you think we're going to listen to you instead of God? Now, beloved, this is why every man, I don't care who he is, has got to teach what he feels God gives him. And I have fought and shed blood for, the, for that man's right to do that. Whether he's going to heaven or hell, it don't matter. He's got the right to teach. 
but you can cut him aside from yourself, don't have anything to do with him, but always fight for his right to teach what he feels the Holy Spirit is giving him. But always go with God's fact and blessings, okay? That way you're always ahead. Satan doesn't need any company in the abyss. Don't go there, okay? But they, they simply told him, I mean, th this was a pretty serious thing. I mean, we're talking to the head modocs here, all right? Telling them, hey, we'll stick to the word and you can promise to throw the book at us all you want to. We'll follow God. Why would they say that? Do you think they were afraid of the power of man or the power of God when he healed that 40-year-old? I'll go with that power every time. Okay, uh, verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. That was to say that 40-year-old. He was past 40, up walking around. Okay. Okay, we could continue on. I want to go one other place here. I want to go to chapter 6. Poor old Stephen. You know, Stephen was a very righteous man. Do you know, he, he gave, in, in chapter 7 of this book of Acts, he gave one of the greatest Bible studies as far as summing up the plan of God you'll ever read anywhere. They ultimately ended up stoning him for having delivered that. But this question has always been among men, by what authority, by what power uh, do you do these things? And Stephen was one chosen, and what a teacher. It's a different study for a different time, but um, if you've never really covered chapter 7 with completeness, you've got the whole fact right there. And in a sense, you have a type of one being delivered up before the false Messiah when it comes to Stephen, only they can't touch a hair on your head as it is written in Luke 21. But here you have a type. This is why this following immediately Pentecost, it's so very important. And the speaking of what would happen at the, to the church started out, you know, when we were first reading in chapter 3, just before that, in chapter 2, they only had 120. Then it grew to 3,000. Here, I believe where we're at today, it's 5,000 plus. I mean, it's growing. Why? That's the obvious presence of the Holy Spirit bringing forth the truth. Uh, verse 8 of chapter 6 concerning Stephen. And Stephen, full of faith and power, dunamis, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He had it. Let me ask you something. Where does this come from? I, I hope I don't have to tell you. I, I'm going to, but I know you already know in your mind. It comes from him. Why? It's his power. It's God's power. It comes from him. But it is your faith. That's why I bring it out again for emphasis. I don't want you to forget. It is your faith faith, that is to say your belief in Him that releases that power through you that you are able to think better, to absorb God's plan, and to make your life a part of it whereby you have that blessing and power in your life. If not, you're missing the boat, friend. Just flat missing the boat. Okay. But Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Nine, this is what will always happen to you. Again, it's a type. Do you think just because you have power and faith that you're going to have smooth sailing through life? What, what do you think God chose a warrior for? To sit around looking pretty? Do you think that Satan's not, if, if you are a child of God and you're serving him, do you think Satan's going to give you a free walk? No, you're his enemy. And if you go to sleep at the switch, he's going to throw it on you. And when God blesses you and you're up here rejoicing, if you're not smart enough, 
Satan's already down here under this platform going, rrr, rrr, rrr. he's sawing the platform right out from under you. Okay? Sometimes your own friends will do it to you. You've got to be careful. Satan works in mysterious ways, but he's easy to spot. Okay? Real easy. So be alert. Why? Well, he's full of faith, full of power, but look what's happening here. Verse 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the, the synagogue of the Libertines, Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and uh, of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Boy, we want, we want to talk about it. We want to have a Bible study right here now. You know, when people say, we want to have a Bible study, and they're confrontational, they don't want to have a Bible study. They want to have their little dreams, okay? Oh, I just like to dream on. Yeah, well, dream on, sucker. All right, dream on. Verse 10. And the, in other words, God is able. Stick to Him and have faith in Him. You don't need some book or some dreamer. 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. If you will stick to the truth and stay focused on it, you'll never be tripped up. Okay. You may start in the wrong chapter sometime, but you'll never be tripped up. Stay focused and you'll never have to make an apology for something you have taught. I could do a little bragging here, and I'm not much of a braggart, but I don't even know how many tapes I have. I don't. I don't know how many I've cut. It would be in the thousands, though. Do you know I've never had to apologize for a thing in those, and they go back several years. That's, and the only reason I mention this is to say stay focused on the Word of God. The Word of man will take you for a ride down Primrose Lane. Do you enjoy that sort of thing? Well, then good. Have a nice trip. It's wonderful. But give me the word every time. I like to be blessed and be prosperous. Verse 11. Then they so born uh, men. That means they bribed a bunch of no goods. That'll lie for money. Uh, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Yep, yep. They'll do that to you. Don't ever get shook up by what some nut has to say. Some squirrel. Okay? Doesn't matter. Stick to the truth. Stick to the Word of God. Twelve. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. That's to say the Sanhedrin. Hey, he got caught. Well, uh, let's see for a moment. What did he get caught in? Telling the truth. Would you dread getting caught telling the truth? No, he can back up everything he says and teaches. Therefore, you never have to worry. Always know what you're doing or don't do it. And I'm not saying don't sit around and be a, a do nothing, all right? Uh, sometimes even it's better to do something in your own life, but I'm talking about teaching Scripture. If you don't know what you're doing, you better leave it alone. It's all right to wonder and ponder and bounce things off of people. But anytime you elevate yourself to the place of teacher, you better know what you're doing because you've come under a whole different set of rules by Almighty God. He doesn't like bad teachers at all. He will not tolerate them, okay? So, and don't ever let that frighten you away from being a teacher. Why? Focus on the Word. That's all you have to worry about, all right? Share it with anyone but stick to it rather than traditions of men. All right, well, as you know, they went ahead. Stephen gave them this great Bible study, and they did stone him, and I think it is a type of God's elect being delivered up at the end times, only the outcome is quite different. Why? Because of the doominess, because of the power, because we have been given, as it is written in Luke 10, verse 18, Power over all of our enemies. Dunamis. Power over the serpents. Power over the scorpions. Those are, those are symbolic items used by 
Almighty God in teaching the great revelation of Jesus Christ, which you'd better be familiar with. Don't ever listen to a man that will tell you you don't have to be familiar with the revelation of Jesus Christ. You would, you would listen to Satan if you would do that. That's what the book of Revelation is. Not the revelation of a man. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Don't turn on Christ. Or I can tell you where you're going. All right? He gave you power to think and to utilize that power. Now, Christ, uh, right after Matthew 24, when um, he told us of how the seven things that would he be in that book of Revelations, the seven trumps, seven seals, the whole bit, told us the seven things that would happen there. He gave us then the ten virgins in the 25th chapter. And, and there was a wedding. Half of them didn't make it. Hey, hey, that's serious, friend. We're talking about the eternity here. Half of them didn't make it before the millennium. And after that, he gave a, a parable that has a great deal to do with this word ability and why we have the title today of this particular sermon, Several Abilities. How many do you have? Matthew chapter 25, let's turn there. Matthew chapter 25. He's just told of the delivery up before the synagogue in Matthew 24, of Satan that is. He has just described the ten virgins and how half of them, they're not going to make it, I'm sorry. You, you become unfocused or out of focus as far as God's Word's concerned. I'm sorry, you're not going to make it in the first resurrection. Who knows about the second? I'm not the judge. <clears throat> Chapter 25, the door is just slammed shut in five so-called virgins. They weren't virgins any longer. That's why they didn't make it. The oil in their lamp ran out. Okay? Don't put anything fleshly to that. That's a spiritual statement. Okay? Okay. Um, and after the wedding and the door is shut, he says in verse 13 of chapter 25, Watch therefore, for you know... For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. But did it say he's not coming? No, he's coming. It's just that man doesn't know when. And then he gives a warning. Verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is, you can count on this. This is the way it is. Do you want to go there? Then listen. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country who calleth his own servants. Now, do you know what that is? That's a worker for Christ, all right? Are you one? Well, I hope so. And delivered unto them his goods. I mean, he's going to be gone a long time. This is put on the terms of um, talents, which is uh, something you have to invest. And naturally, what you're supposed to invest is the truth that God gives you, okay? We'll say that. Now, let's go, 15. And unto one he gave five talents... To another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now let me ask you a question. What do you think that word ability is in the Greek? Dunamis. According now we're switching away from God's power and ability. We're talking now about yours. What you, what you got, friend? I mean, if we're in combat up here together and we're facing 200 enemy and there's only 10 of us, can I count on you? You going to stay there with me? Or are you going to be out of here? In other words, I'm utilizing a military experience. But at the same time, this comes down to you. All right. According to his several abilities. And God gives credit there. He didn't say your little one ability. 
He said, to my servants, several abilities. I don't know what you got, friend. How do you react when the chips are down? Because before Christ returns, they're going to be a, a downing. Don't let some lollygagger loll you off to sleep. Keep your ability sharp by focusing on the Word of God, okay? Now, um, so that's according to man's dunamis, all right? But I, I would ask you a question, where does man's dunamis come from, ability? It comes from him, of course. By your knowledge in him, like father, like son, like daughter, how many in this room realize after you are well studied in the Word of God how much better off you are? Okay, you realize you are a lot better off. Why? You know what's happening in this world. And simply the experience of knowing what's happening in this world, even financially, you're way ahead of the game. You kind of know where to put things if you use this. So you can't help but know you're better off when you're familiar with God's Word, all right? So anyway, uh, that he gave all these gifts according. This doesn't mean he's not going to take advantage of somebody that's slow. Uh, he doesn't count that, and I'll document it before we finish. Okay, he he's using them according to their faith and ability. Dunamis, all right? Uh, that's why I love can-do type people, all right? I don't particularly enjoy quitters. I won't ride with them very far, I guarantee you, okay? Verse 16, then he, I love all people, I want you to know that, but I'm talking about when we get down to the nitty-gritty or if I'm going to do something where I know it's going to get a little tight, I'm only taking the best with me, all right? That's to say doing God's business Everybody's going to be blessed, but I want the best to do war, all right? And we're in a war, and it's with Satan, all right? Verse 16, Then he that hath received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Boy, he, he, 100%. Good. 17, And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. How much, what percentage is that? Still 100%. I'm right, aren't I? Yeah, that's 100% in anybody's book, all right? Any, and if you want new math, old math, algebra, trig, whatever you want to go, that's 100%, okay? 18, Lord, I hope I'm right. <laughs> 18, you know those little thoughts can slip up on you when you make a point like that, all right? Uh, two by two is four, right? Two, <laughs> 18. Uh, but he that hath received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. What good is it going to do there? What good is it going to do there? God gives you a truth and you say, oh, it's so beautiful, I'm going to hold it in my little bosom. Well, well if, you know, that, that's, that's selfish. If God gives you something that's beautiful, He expects you to share it. Spend it! And that's why we use the talent, all right? It's a, it, the analogy, okay? He gives you something to share. I know a lot of times, and here I'm, I don't know why I'm bringing myself into this. I never use myself as an object, hardly ever. Sometimes He'll give me the most beautiful message. I, well, I'll use this one as an example. I had something totally different planned in, planned for today, and it just wouldn't come together for me, and I had the, uh, between plowing and mowing and my garden with Dennis teaching this week, I had all kinds of time, and I, yeah, that'll work, but I found out Friday night it wouldn't work. Do you know why God wanted this Pentecost message taught for today? Because it's Pentecost. He has a strange way of guiding slow pokes. You know, or hello, you know, but he'll get there. He'll get you. But um, anyway, um, Father takes care of his own. When he, he'll give me a truth. Now, man, I'm gonna, I'd like to save that for a different time, you know, like Passover, Fall Fellowship. I learned a long time ago, don't do it. 
If he gives it to you, he means now. Get it out there. And so there you go. Anyway, when God gives you something, and I, I apologize for even bringing myself into this, but if God gives you something, don't shout it from the street corner, but when someone asks you a question or whatever, share that truth with those that you fellowship with. It's beautiful. It's from the Father. And that's what He wants you to spend it. And when He gives it to you, He means He loves you and trusts you. Okay? Uh, okay. This poor little fellow. Let me find out what verse we left him in. Verse 19. After a long time, almost 2,000 years, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth, reckoneth with them. There's always a day of reckoning, friend. You're going to be there. The book will be opened. All right? Repent often. <laughs> Repent often. Get that blotted clean. 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. What did the Lord say? His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You come on into the kingdom. You're my buddy. We can ride together. You pass the test. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Did he give any more of a compliment to the five than the two? Answer, no. Why? He gave it to them according to their several abilities. And they exercised. They produced. They came through. That's important. Verse 24, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. I'm sure that would happy the Lord to say that, wouldn't it? You, you go out here gathering everybody else's work. Whoa. <laughs> I don't want to be caught saying that to the Lord. Okay. 25. And I was afraid. You show me a person like this, and I'll show you somebody that's afraid of everything. All right? I was afraid, and I went and hid my, thy talent in the earth, and lo, there thou hast that is thine. And he gave him back that one little old talent. Had that hid in his little old bosom all that time. What good did it do? None. Nothing. Because I can tell you right now, well, it would have helped him. No, it won't, because he's on his way out. Okay, we're going to send him way out there. Why? He went against God. We're going to get rid of him here in just a minute. Verse 26, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Do you know what this word slothful is in the Greek? He didn't exactly call him stupid. He called him slow. And it's slow to understand what the blessings of God, the power of God through his faith, to have faith in him. Okay? This is not against some handicapped person or anyone of that nature, and do not try to read that into it. It's a person that is too lazy to reach out to God. It's there for everyone. It's there. Success is for everyone. If you reach out and take it, Reach for the gold ring and go for it, all right? But do it God's way. I mean, you can tell this person is scared to death and a little lazy besides. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I had not strawed. 27, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. You'd been better to go down to the bank and put it on savings. And then at that, and then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. I'd at least had a little something with it. You might have took it down there and invested it in the bank and one of those tellers got converted right there. 
You know, we might have converted a bank teller and made hay while the sun shines, you know. Um, is that fair? Well, I guess so. You know, it might have done a little something, all right? What's he going to do to this person? This is serious, 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. Whoa. Does that sound fair? You bet it does. It sounds totally fair. Do you know why? The old boy with ten has already proved he knows what to do with it. He's going to invest it. He's going to spend it. He's going to be prosperous. He's not shaggy. He's not going to be, by that I mean with God's work. He's going to use it. Put it out to the people where it can grow and amount to something. So don't, don't ever think that the Lord was unfair in doing that. Why? The old boy had had it, let's be honest, for over 2,000 years, and he, or almost, and he hadn't done anything with it. You've got to give up on somebody pretty soon, don't you, after 2,000 years. I don't figure they're going to change. Like a lot of these ladies, they'll find some old boy and he'll be a little rough. and I can change him. Watch out, sugar. Watch out. <laughs> oh. 29. For unto every... I, I, well, 29. <laughs> For unto every one that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance. I mean, that's the way it is, friend. Be in the abundance class, okay? But, and we're talking about truth here. We're not talking about money, understand? Truth that feeds the soul, where you know where you are, who you are, and how to use the power. Uh, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. He's going to lose it. You know, it's the saddest thing in the world to see that come to pass, to see somebody losing just a little bit at a time until they're back like an old sow wallowing in the mire. It happens, friend. 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the way it's going to happen. It's the way it's going to be. You know, I, I, I real quickly, I, I know I'm keeping you a little bit long. 1 Corinthians chapter... 12, real quickly here, and I'm just going to catch one or two verses and we're out of here. Well, I don't know if we're out of here or not, but we're going to be through with this. We're going to go into a few questions. Some, we might even do a little counseling about women changing men. <laughs> Who knows? I think not. I think not. I'm teasing. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. All right, think on these things, beloved. As, as you drive home today, think on them. Chapter 12, verse 7, 1 Corinthians. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. It's given to you to profit everyone. Not yourself, but everyone. For to one is given by, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. That means uh, to... To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. In other words, a person is able to express those things. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. That's The gift is what in the Greek? Charisma. Okay. Gives them the ability. Uh, ten. To another, the working of miracles. Anybody want to guess what that word miracles in the Greek is? It's the word study for today. Dunamis, okay. dunamis, dynamite. I mean, he gives that gift sometimes that it's explosive because it's so fast and it works so well. Give an old boy a stack of bricks and he'll end up with the um, prettiest little old house in, um, the, in the country. I can remember back when if you had a little brick house at the back, you were really something. <laughs> People from Oklahoma smiled. <laughs> Verse 10, that's dunamis, I mean real power. To another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, 
That means good from bad, to be able to deter, discern evil spirit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation thereof. In other words, sons, he gives the experience of speaking many languages, where they can preach in all of those languages, but then you might have some go to a place where you don't know their language, so you better take an interpreter with you, or the people are not going to know what you're saying. He gives these gifts. He gives this power. What I, why I went there, I want you to know he gives everyone. You're not left out unless you choose to be left out. It's your choice. But you've got to remember, do you know why God gives power? When you do it his way. Don't, I'm going to tell you some dangerous points. Well, I've, I've been over Isaiah a dozen times. I know it all. Oh, you do. Well, let me tell you something, friend. I've taught it through. I couldn't even tell you how many times, and I learn something new every time. Why? I don't know it all. God doesn't like a know-it-all, all right? And he, especially those that just think they do, okay? Um, he, so do it his way. You're never going to know what he knows. He's our father. He doesn't need a counselor. He doesn't, okay? He may use you as one to people, but God doesn't need counseling. Well, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that one can minister to God if they speak in that tongue. No, that's not what it said. It said if you know a certain language and you're going to a country, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where they can't speak your language, then God and the angels will know what you're saying, but those people are not. Why? Because God understands all languages. He, he doesn't need a minister except to minister to his people. That's what he got you for, okay? Is to share those truths, that power. So stick to his word. Why, why could that poor little fellow, he didn't reach up into God's word and grab more? Don't, don't be satisfied with just what you got in knowledge. Keep searching. Keep digging into the same books, the same word, and realize that as man, we really don't know too much of anything compared to our Father because that word is pregnant and it continues to grow. And if you cover it over and over and over, you're still going to have some shocks when he returns. All right? I can promise you that. I know from experience. All right. So having said that, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the written word. We thank you for the power, the dunamis, Father. We ask that it be portioned, Father, to our several abilities, Father. Utilize us, for we are one body. Had we covered just a few more verses, so it says it's, that we are one body, and with the several gifts, it goes to to uh, better the whole body as, as a whole. Father, use us, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.